Happy New Year, everybody! What is going on? Welcome to the Ichiban Nonsense Podcast, where it's a new year, but the same nonsense mentality. I'm your host, BitWZan, and joining me, as always, is the Nonsense Crew. First off, we have the man whose New Year's resolution is to piss off Zan by watching terrible movies that forces me to watch them, Minister E. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know that's your plan. I think I know that's your plan. So, <laughs> um, next, we have a man whose New Year's resolution was to be the inspiration for a scumbag scam, which gosh, got made in real life. <laughs> Ms. Antti is on the East Coast. Yes. How do you feel, Ms.? So, you were, you were, uh, you, you actually, yeah, you were the facilitator for this. It was funny. I actually brought this up to you guys yesterday when. It was like an old podcast a while ago. We were talking about, like, what's the most scumbaggiest scam you can do? And you actually pitched this exact thing, which of course we're talking about. It's the mystery box. Oh, mystery brand, mystery box, whatever the thing is called. I think it's called mystery brand. Look, man, I, I, I can't be held for my scumbag ideas that I threw into the world, okay? People picked it up. That's, uh, that, that's on them. What I want to know is, like, are you horrified that the idea got made, or are you pissed off that you uh, <laughs> didn't think of it, you didn't put it into action first? Uh, yeah, I'm just, like, surprised that people would actually, like, do that and try to implement it in real life. Because, like, I was just trying to make them an idea that I thought was, like, kind of scummy, but I didn't think people would actually <laughs> do. Or people would actually, like, start buying it, too. I know. Well, when it's endorsed by, like, these popular YouTubers who who are, you know, branching. And I was going to say, it's like uh, people like Rice Gum, which I don't even know what the hell his content is, but he's apparently popular. And like the Paul brothers, Logan and Jake, those guys endorse the fuck out of it. And you know, their audience is generally six to fucking 14 year olds or whatever, which are pretty impressionable yeah. and dumb and will buy whatever the hell um, people would tell. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's not, right? okay, we were sick. being dumb. <laughs> Look, we were that age, and I, I remember being, being pretty dumb when I was that age and buying a lot of shit that I didn't need. So I'm still struggling now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like, oh, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things, like, where, yeah, these guys are endorsing the hell out of it, and it's like, oh, okay, so you're pretty much endorsing gambling to children, and I know pretty much. Uh, uh, Pewds took issue with that, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's let's bring in the last. The last nonsense crew member, whose New Year's resolution is to finally admit she's a fake gamer girl, come to state. Oh my god! That her boyfriend is the one that's behind her playing so well at Overwatch. I don't even it's have finally a time to come out. It's finally time to come out, Kitty. We all know that that the reason you play so well at Overwatch is because your boyfriend is right I'm next back. to you playing I'm it, and you're just on done. this one. Just for the fact that I oh my god! By secret. <laughs> the salt. The salt is still there. Well, yeah. Rude. I don't even, first of all, I don't even have yes. like. Uh, oh my god, I'm so triggered right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, so we make a joke about it, but I want to actually start the podcast with this with this topic. Uh, make a joke about it, but it actually was a serious thing here. Where um, what we were talking about was um, the, I guess, Overwatch pro player Ellie. I don't know if you can call her that anymore because she's not. <clears throat> Ellie slash so, Punisher. Ellie slash Punisher. Yeah. So it was funny because like this has like layers upon layers of like weird twists and turns where it's it's so like interesting but like really unnecessary is what is the only thing I can think about when I like. When I talked about when I thought about this whole story and stuff, so this is how it all started. So, I guess a month or so ago, this new streamer or player called Ellie, no last name, nothing. That's just their handle. Started climbing the like the board, the, the rank levels of Overwatch, um, competitive scene, and apparently got so good that they were able to make it to the top 500. Last I saw, they were like still number four in the top 500, which is pretty high considering that. Top 500 is usually reserved for, like, the pro players, the guys who do, like, the Overwatch League or, like, Overwatch competitive scene and stuff like that. Like, that's usually there, and she was up there. Um, 
people started thinking it was weird. Like, you know, she was having like um, high win rates with certain characters. But then when she was on stream, she wouldn't use those characters. Um, they were saying like, yeah, her play style was di different depending on like when she was or people were saying um, they could hear other people next to her when she was playing or something like that while she was on chat, which was also a weird thing. Uh, so this called into question a lot of people were like, you know, saying, oh, this is, you know, she's being weird. A lot of, you know, typical stuff. People saying it's not her playing it. It's not her playing it. A lot of the same, you know, stuff that happens in Overwatch community or any other community when a girl happens to be good at a game. They think she's faking it. Um, this got kind of amped up when the Overwatch Contenders team second win uh, picked up Ellie for their team. And this got, like I said, it's got even amped up even more where people were just saying like, no, like, like this is bullshit. Like, how can you just pick her up? You know, some, and then they showed like this chat thing where people were talking about like for contenders, people's names should be released like first and last name, which is kind of weird. Yeah. And I think one guy uh, who went by the hand of Haunts was saying that he proposed that he's going to go like dox her. Not to be malicious, but just to get, or just to, I think the way he phrased it was like, just to find some shit or like, you know, something like that. But essentially he just wanted to figure out her information. That's ridiculous. Um, well, before we go further, I want to see what you guys think of like so far, like that whole thing. Cause like, I mean, we, I think we've talked before about how the toxicity in like gaming towards females and stuff like that has been running rampant for years and stuff. So <clears throat> What do you think about, like, that whole thing? Like, because obviously the idea of doxing somebody just to find out the information, whether they're wrong or right, I, I don't know if that's... That's too much, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like, there, there's, like, she doesn't... If she was real, she doesn't have to share her, like, exactly. whole life story just to, like, justify her being good at a game. Like, like we know now that it's not real, but, like, if, it, if she was, it's like... It's like any other, like youtuber or entertainment person like they're not gonna give you their whole like information just mm -hmm. like for your justification like it's so stupid like it is dumb because what if let's say i was mute and i had my little sister talk for me <laughs> mm. what would they say to that <laughs> oh it's a fraud well he can't talk so his sister talks for him we'll blow the whole mm. thing wide open because it's ridiculous that's going too far to say oh it's one question a female player who <clears throat> cares one question that was just brought up and i want to see what you guys think about it i mean you probably already know the answer that you guys would state is that if this were a guy who were opting out of like you know not revealing his name and coming out of nowhere and doing this stuff would there be such you know toxicity towards them or do you guys think it would still because a lot of guys on the internet are saying this would still happen even if it was a guy and other people other people, mostly female, are saying, like, I doubt it. If this was a guy that came out of nowhere and was like this, you guys would give him the pass. Um, I think they would be suspicious because top 500 people, they all, they, like, know who they are, right? Like, it's usually, mm -hmm. like, those top players and anybody new, like, brand new that they've never seen is kind of weird. But I don't think they would have delved so deep into it if it was a guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't yeah. question his skills as much. Absolutely. I, I, I know that, you know, especially the social media and all that stuff. So I know it's 100% toxic, and we have a lot of problems out there. And there's sexism, racism, the whole nine. So I will not hide it. It's like, yeah, it would have probably been definitely different if it was a dude. Okay. So going further into the story then... Um... So the team second win, the Overwatch Contenders team, were kind of preparing Ellie for like you know to join the team to get ready for like interviews and playing with the team and stuff like that. Um, but Ellie, I guess, decided that <clears throat> she was she didn't want to deal with any of this stuff, and this plan, this whole thing, fell through because she opted out for personal reasons. Um, and she, I guess the team didn't impress her for, it, but didn't impress her to find out what the reasons were. But everybody kind of like figured it was because she was being harassed so much that she her information was doxxed and like you know people were just like constantly harassing her with this stuff so she was going to step away from it and i think she just put out a twitter post stating like sorry and people were coming to her defense that sucked and even like the the team second one put out a, uh, a release saying like you know as a team we admit that they didn't ha they handled it poorly because like they were saying like they were they defended her too saying like you know we just wanted a player 
and everybody else was like looking at her a different way like you know <clears throat> uh some people were looking at her as some kind of like messiah type this is like what they use like the words like she was kind of like this you know Mm -hmm. This female figure that was coming to help her and other people were looking at her, obviously, in a negative way, like, you know, this can't be real. So they were like, we just wanted to play her. But I guess that, you know, the community isn't there yet. So that kind of sucked. We're not there yet, man. Not even as a society. We're not there yet. (laughs) That's the Star Um, Trek universe. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Eventually, it did come out. Um, this is where it takes like a big, big twist and stuff like that, and like we have to like really, you know, like, get into it and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So Blizzard had found out that after Ellie removed herself from the team, that they notified Second Wind that Ellie had what Blizzard said was that Ellie, Ellie had not been deceiving the team, and that the high ranked account was used for purposes. Oh, it did she was deceiving the team, and she was in the, the account for uh, purposes we did not support. And they were referencing some, like, social experiment that apparently her boyfriend, uh, going by the Handu Punisher, was allegedly conducting with the account. Um, I don't think he actually he ever specifies what the experiment was, like, what he was trying to actually achieve or anything like that. A lot of people assumed it was mostly like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, he was trying to see, like, if people would take a game girl, a gamer girl seriously, if she was in the top 500, or would there be like this big outrage or whatever? I don't know if he actually specified what it was. Um, I had to actually see and look up because I know there was uh, the tweet. Um, there was a Twitter information by a character I forgot what the name was, but he put it out saying that um, Punisher had admitted to one another streamer that he was like kind of like lying about this stuff and like he was playing on his girlfriend's account and like baiting some of the top pro guys and stuff like that and was kind of doing it to be a social experiment that got out of hand and this is where it takes a real weird turn because it's like now you kind of like fucked up the whole situation see and Mm -hmm. i kind of want to see what you guys thought about that that yes it was a situation where at first it seemed it was just another typical toxic you know situation where another girl gamer was coming into play and people were kind of like you know hating on her and stuff like that and harassing her and then it turned into a situation where like oh well it was kind of true i guess the boyfriend was helping her play and getting her up the ranks and i mean it wasn't to try to get her on the team but more of a social experiment so i don't agree with the social experiment approach or whatever but yeah. We we know that everybody out there is like I said, it's not just it's not the video game community only. It's that's pretty much human nature that we deal with. You're gonna deal with sexist people, racist people, all types of stuff. So mm-hmm. the online community is just one of those things where people can hide themselves and then show how ugly they are <laughs> on the airwaves. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. If he's, I don't know if he's trying to fix anything, but I don't think it fixed anything. I think it just like maybe I, it showed some people how ugly they are. If yeah, they, didn't know they they had those feelings and they saw their comments or something like that. They're like, oh shit, <laughs> maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't put that. So I don't know. I don't think it was actually a, a social experiment. I think he just want like wanted to troll people and then he uses the social experiment as like a scapegoat you know like he's like oh i'm trying to help but really it kind of just set like female gamers back because if they made other people correct by saying you know that they that like they're being boosted or like somebody's playing for them because that's exactly what happened like it's not like it didn't help at all (laughs) it sets them back. Dude all along. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and like it feels like like they like they just set us back, and now like ugh, mm. I don't know, it's so dumb. That's a point that's been made. Yeah, Mez, you've been quiet. You got anything on this one? Uh, yeah. It's like I feel like they've I've I've heard of people doing something similar and stuff where they like they kind of uh try to pretend to be a female doing a certain job or doing a certain thing just to see like different reactions people would get 
between male and female. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've heard it done in a, in a workplace where someone would like um, use the email or account of like a female coworker and send out an email and then have the, the reaction to that email be different whether they're sending it on like th- that coworker's account or their account even if it's the same like idea or same information so like if it's that kind of thing where they're trying to say it's like uh the different reaction between what a female would get versus a male would get for playing the same thing playing the same way i could understand that but it it is true what uh kitty and a lot of people were saying where it's like now you kind of put it back to a point where people are gonna be even more now they have like kind of um i guess legitimacy to the argument of them saying it's like oh look this one person has done it before so it's possible that if you see a female gamer doing too well then it's just her boyfriend yeah Uh, so they're giving like it's giving legitimacy to that argument because now you have an example to point to yeah um that's all fair right there yeah i mean i could see that totally happening and that's a lot of uh fear that people especially females were having online that in this instance since the doxing worked that if you know more women to, were to come out and you know be legitimate gamers or be good or trying to like but still kind of like you know not put out all the information out there this could lead to another Surprise. instance of this happening yeah um so to, to tell you, like, yeah, the say the, the the Twitter thread that I got this from too was a uh, slasher Rod or uh, Rod Breslau at Slasher. He was the one that kind of like, I don't know if he broke the story, but he kind of like dealt out some of the most information that I seen, and he's the one that said that yeah, Ellie was in private messages to teammates confirming that she's not the one playing and that she is just like, which is I think the saddest part. Oh, she was like a seventeen year old girl, but she's not good at Overwatch. The fact that she's like that young is another trippy thing. Like, damn, it sucks. Dealing with that at that age, it's got to be crazy. Yeah, he he goes to kind of hold this whole thing, saying that Punisher was the one who assumed uh, to have played as Ellie. Um, there might have been multiple other people playing on that account. Then he screenshots some uh, some messages that Punisher had, and uh, like I think it was in Discord with uh, uh, another Overwatch player named Katsui, where he kind of like brags about smurfing on his girlfriend's account, and then like I don't know, like I said. He doesn't necessarily identify it as boosting because he wasn't trying to get her anything. He was just trying to conduct a social experiment, which I guess you guys don't believe. I don't. Um, I like that he says, like, you know, social experiment. And by social experiment, he means, like, being a conniving asshole, which I think is uh, <laughs> accurate to state. Um, I mean, more of this comes out. He, like, another Overwatch player, Bunny Adore, came out and stated that this guy was also using another account called Beamily or whatever to also smurf and whatever. So... I don't know. It seems like this guy was just having fun. Like, I think this kitty kind of, yeah, nailed it on the head. He was more about just trolling and just trying to, like, have fun and, like, breakfast. All his stuff, like, you see the screenshots of the things he was doing. He was just kind of, like, like, baiting people and, like, taunting them and stuff like that. Saying, like, oh, you got mad because, like, I killed you and I'm a girl and stuff like that. Or 1v1 me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, taunting them in that way to, I guess, kind of, like, you know, humiliate them or whatever like that that's not you trying to like show the bad side of the community that's you like purposely troll. trying to troll people yeah mm-hmm. you know so that's weird and it just sucks that that girl like because you know she kind of got dragged into this and she was the one that probably had to deal with most of the harassment and stuff like that right because like he didn't like even though he's he's hearing like he might have got messages or whatever he could probably just walk away from it and she's still going to be the one that deals with all that shit on her Twitter or on whatever other, you know, if she goes on PlayStation, or I mean, not on PlayStation, on PC and sign in, she, her account's probably going to get, like, un, you know, docs again or, you know, she has to deal with all this bullshit, not him. Because he can, as somebody else pointed out, he can kind of just walk away from the whole situation and that's it. He doesn't have to deal with it as a guy because it was a fake account. So that kind of sucks. So I hope that doesn't, like, really... You know, mess with her too much in the future, and this is all kind of just, you know, forgotten about and stuff because that would suck for her. Um, but 
if you want to keep on the, the scumbag train here, let's go back to what I was referencing about earlier. This whole mystery <laughs> mystery brand thing. We got we're starting off 2019 with scumbags galore here. We're gonna start off with the scumbag galore. So yeah, um, I caught wind of this um, by the website Daily Dot, which kind of like put out a a response that uh, PewDiePie did, I guess, to this whole mystery brand thing. Um, kind of calling out the Jake Paul and uh, Rice Gum over like their endorsement of this mystery brand dot net um, website, which I guess is kind of like real life loot boxes. Like I was talking about earlier, where you pay a certain amount of money and like they vary in price and you get items depending on what you order. So Minister they actually have his face. <laughs> Uh, they have different kind of ones, like I, like I was mentioning before. Like they have, you know, like a sneaker box. They have an Apple box, hoodies. They have Supreme box, the brand. Um, some a woman's bags box, and then they have legitimate mystery box, which is the cheapest one. I think it goes for about three ninety nine, and you just don't know what's in that in that box. I guess it could be whatever. Um, so PewDiePie is calling them out because like. Those guys' audience generally seem to be in the range of like six year olds to like uh, 14, 15, 16 year olds around there. And they're essentially endorsing a gambling site. So here we go again. We talked about this somewhat a lot last year too, where we say that content creators on YouTube or YouTubers have a certain responsibility, especially when you know what your audience, you know, is age range is. So. Like, we're here again. I don't know. What's your thoughts on this whole uh, scumbag thing? Like, is it fair play? Because, like, they're just endorsing another product? Or is it, like, yeah, you guys need to know what you're doing? And Because PewDiePie says it's it's fucked up. He's pretty much, like, to summarize everything else, he put out a whole video for it. He's kind of actually, like, really, like, serious in it. Not being his usual thing, like, self and everything. He's actually pretty serious. And he's condemning the whole thing. So what do you guys think about that? I just think it's a terrible idea altogether mystery box (laughs) (laughs) yeah i okay it i don't know it's like so dumb at this point like yes like how many like because there's already like like a loot box right where there's like it's a mystery box as well but like you know you're getting you relatively know what you're getting it's a loop yeah, loot crate and all those things like that generally tell you what you're getting that month. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like it's not like a loot box like in Overwatch where you don't know what you're opening. This mm-hmm. is what their this mystery brand is kind of tailoring itself to. Whereas, yeah, yeah the loot crates were like, this is what you're gonna get this month, essentially. Like it, yeah. the themes are this, and you're gonna get this. It's not like you don't know what you're gonna get, and these mystery brand boxes kind of like this make so- it like that. <sighs> yeah, like even like some like the the loot crate. And stuff like that. Like they have the whole thing where it's like, you know, even if you don't know exactly what it is, they tell you where it's gonna be like. You get one T-shirt, one pop figure, one collectible. Yeah, yeah. So you have like an idea of what you're gonna get, mm-hmm. and like, and the theme it could be like sci-fi, it could be like yeah. Buffy, or it could be you know what whatever. Like it, it's generally like a, a generic theme. Like yeah, it could be like you know uh, high fantasy, sci-fi, western theme stuff. So you get something along those lines, and then it could be whatever. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Then, like, I'm I'm looking at the whole, like, mystery brand, brand uh, website now. Mm-hmm. And, like, the way they kind of put it out there, too, is, like, they're showing all these, like, the brand names where they're saying, like, mm-hmm. oh, this is stuff you can get in the box. Where, it's, like, yeah. they have, like, the Yeezys or Apple stuff or Supreme yes. or, like, gamer stuff. But then, like, towards the top of the site, you kind of see what people are actually winning from this stuff. Like, it shows, like, a live win kind of thing. And they're mm. winning, like, USB fans or, yeah. like, uh, fidget spinners. Yes. Uh, like, cheap off-brand uh, charging cables and stuff like that. Like, that's... It, it's... The way they're representing it looks really wrong. Yes. Because they're I- representing it in a way where it's like, oh, you could win all this... Like high brand stuff for three ninety nine, when really you're you're most likely gonna get trash. Yes, and mm-hmm. that's actually what I was gonna go into as well because those YouTubers, Ricecom and Jake Paul, have 
done videos about this and like where they open these uh, mystery boxes and they get all this cool shit and they're like wow this is like so easy like you know they promote it as like oh, wow. this is so simple yeah like they've actually done videos oh. opening boxes and where they're getting so like how Mess was saying happens. they're misrepresenting yeah they're misrepresenting the product because they're making it seem like if you just buy it you're gonna get something cool where more than likely you're gonna get blues and grays you know to yeah. put it into overwatch speak you know you're not gonna get those yellows maybe not even a purple but you're gonna be getting <laughs> those blues and grays and even PewDiePie did that. I think he even um, went into his video where he was like, um, like opening these mystery brand boxes that he himself ordered that weren't like, cause he, he um, speculates that rice gum and Jake Paul and all the other YouTubers that are promoting this product are probably going into an account where the numbers are being fixed for them. So they can get, those guys can get cool shit and show it off. But then when PewDiePie did it and I, I guess he, I didn't like, you know, know what exactly all he did, but he must have just <clears throat> done like another account or something like that. And he opened his and nothing. It was just, as Mess said, like a whole bunch of cheap, mostly useless stuff, you know, was popping up on the screen. Yeah. Um, he's, he's not on their PR list like the other ones are. Yeah. Um, and he states like, you know, he's been hit up by these companies and he knows how that game works because <clears throat> obviously it makes sense. He's like the top youtuber right still right now i think i don't know if t-series has passed him yet but he's still one of the top youtubers around um so it makes sense that he would get hit with so many people trying to like you know so many advertisers and sponsors trying to come at him so he kind of knows how that game works so he knows how fucked up they're what they're doing oh what, what it is those guys are doing but kitty i think you were trying to say something before you let me go back into it what about loot box oh yeah or loot, loot crate yeah they're yeah. they give yeah. you a minimum value which is mm. of the box, but I don't know. It's yeah. pretty good quality, unlike <laughs> off-brand chargers or whatever they say. I don't know. I just, like, people are so stupid, too. Like, but I know they're kids, and... Uh, I don't That's know. That's the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's fun about it, but, like, obviously you can't blame, kids like, kids because kids. they're impressionable. Like, they're, if, they're gonna... They're gonna trust... The you know their YouTube who they like, idolize you know? yeah yeah they're but gonna if trust those an, guys if an adult buys this they're fucking retarded then like I can't <laughs> I can't I like how one of the tabs though it's called hype beast and I was like God yeah this is endorsed by those those people yeah <laughs> I, was... um, I don't even know what that is <laughs> <laughs> just... actually me neither I don't know what that is so. Hype beast is oh. basically like anytime you see someone weren't like trying to hype like Supreme uh, as a uh, brand or like stuff like that or people like that are so out of it, super e. into <laughs> brands. <laughs> Our age is showing you e. we're we're out of it. We're out of the yeah, man. We're dated. <laughs> yep. The nineties was our time. That was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay. So I mean overall consensus is pretty scumbaggy thing. Like these guys are just trying to are out there for a pay, which sucks. Cause like you guys have money already. I'm assuming, like especially the freaking Paul brothers. Yeah. You know those guys are always brag about how much money they got, and they're already trying to like, you know, shit their freaking you know audience and stuff like that. That seems to be a popular thing too with like you know YouTubers. Like eventually they get to a certain point where they just endorse shitty products or you know scam their their uh, audience into buying whatever, and they try to justify it in some way. I don't know how you could, but they are. It's um, that fat check they see come across that desk. Yeah, I know. Endorse this. You know, I hope we have that problem one day, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Put our uh, morals on the line. <laughs> yeah, I know. That reminds so, me. One time I, some money. I, I got an email for a, like kind of a sponsorship. It's mm. a story for another time, I think. But I didn't reply because I didn't see it for like months. But I was like... <laughs> I'll just tell you really fast. So, like, I have another email, right, specifically just for my channel. And it's, like, um, and so, like... Get to work? <laughs> what? Get to work? <laughs> Is that what it's called? No. No, but... I thought I was, like, what? I thought that's what they emailed me. No. Saying, Get to work. Do put some videos out. No, they, like, they're, like, hey, we, we saw your video. But they didn't put the name of the video. They just put a link of one of the videos. And they're, mm. like, we really liked it or whatever. And they're they're like, um, we want to like give you t like a percentage off of their website or something. 
like that and i was mm. like this is weird like yeah it feels I think weird i've seen that one before a long time ago and i was like i was like I, I, like we're not there yet that you can be sending us emails about how good our videos are or whatever like yeah i, cause I think i've seen that on the the gamer club uh email gmail one too i was like yeah mm. it's kind of sketchy huh yeah it's i just kind of deleted it it was like same. I wonder but if it was like a real opportunity and we didn't. Uh, you didn't it's quite take possible. It. <laughs> Google does uh, email people if you search certain things. And then, yeah. but they emailed me like three times too. But this was like months ago, and I did I barely checked my email like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, whoops. <laughs> Anyways, that's my story. Well, if they're listening, you gotta like I guess some send out some real validity or something like that. Like you know you're real. Send it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cause I heard someone got a job from uh, Google, just from uh, the stuff that they were searching. And instead of finding the page, Google said, "Hey, you're speaking our language. Would you like a job?" I guess they they that powerful. They could do stuff like that. Wow. Or trip me out at yeah. first too. It's like FBI. Um, Better than actually, FBI. You know what? We can just segue into the weeks, Kitty. You can go on because like I, that was really it for the news anyway. So oh. if you want to go on with your week, you can go. You can go ahead since you kind of like uh, started with the emails. Okay. Um, so, I got a job, finally. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but it's been Again. like six months. <laughs> I did the math, it's been like six months. Anywho, I got a job now. It's pretty fun, I guess. I work at a ramen shop now, and it smells so <laughs> great all the time. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's, I've never worked at, worked at a restaurant before, so it's like, very interesting um yeah. see how long when you take out a pool see how long kitty lasted this job <laughs> oh my goodness she has such she, a like yeah she, she has a such like a that ramen if it's a good spot if it tastes good it's pretty if it good. Taste good you can keep it then but it's, it it's pretty good. good like he like we i can't tell you the trade secrets actually he won't tell me because like i've only been working there for like two days <laughs> Find it out and email it to me. I know. <laughs> the secret recipe. Secret recipe for sale on eBay. <laughs> you just find out it's just like a normal, a normal uh, recipe and stuff. Is it I, like a? Is it is the um the owner? Imagine like is it like Japanese or I, Asian descent or is it just like a? He is, but he's like born and raised in Salt Lake. But he has, but he's okay. Obviously, the family Asian. secret passed down. Yeah, and he makes the noodles there. Asian. And I'm like, wow, fascinating. And then he's the only one that makes the noodles. He's there like every day. I feel bad for him, mm. but he chooses to be there every day. Anyways, so yeah. He it, enjoys what he does. It sounds yeah. like so. That's a good thing for him. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. And yeah, I learned how to do a lot of stuff now. Like, I've never been a waitress. Nice. <laughs> I learned how oh, to do yeah. that. But my ultimate goal is to be like a cook there. So, but like he's like, well, we do everything. So you have to learn this French stuff first. And I was like, fine, whatever. Um, oh, so you don't, you didn't cook anything yet? No, not yet. Get that recipe, Kitty. I that know. He I doesn't know. trust her yet. He, yeah. yeah. Not in the family. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> I love ramen. Get that recipe. <laughs> Steal it. <laughs> um. So yeah. So. I'm doing that. And then I start school tomorrow, guys. That's not, that's like my future oh, yeah. week, but like, it's kind of scary. It's been a long time, uh, like eight years or so since I've been to school. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Um, eight I haven't years. really done anything to prepare. I'm just kind of in like. It's like, like a, like a proper, like, it's not online. It's a proper, you got to go in. Yeah. In house oh, okay. universe. Yeah. Get, get, leave my house taking my last naps guys because <laughs> not gonna be able to nap as much no nap in class um is it just, is this orientation or is it actually like the first day of class first day of class yeah oh okay so you already did the orientation and stuff mm -hmm. like in oh, december wow. or november oh okay yeah yeah pretty pretty scary stuff um let's see what is acid. it a big school or kind of like small it's just the community college here so it's oh, okay. like kind of big because they have a lot of different campuses. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's scary. It's gonna. Be I'm gonna. Fun. I think. <laughs> what? It'll be fun. You meet new yeah. friends. Oh yeah, that's still my goal. Like to make female friends. Uh, hopefully, yeah. I find some. But it's like I'm taking the culinary. Oh. Art. 
culinary Gosh. arts. Like, yeah, culinary arts. Yeah. So you're getting into cooking, huh? Yeah. Like, that used to be my thing a long time ago, and then, like, I kind of stopped for, like, you know, money reasons. I know you like, were back and forth between, like, botany as well. and everything, I know. So. They don't have that here, though, like, at the community college, mm. so. And then, so like, I was going to do time. chemistry. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to do this semester and see if I still like it. If not, I'm going to switch to something else. <sighs> yeah. It's hard out here. But anyway, so I have that coming up. It's hard out here for (laughs) Kim. Yeah. What else did I do? Okay. Um, I tried to watch that Netflix movie, the Black Mirror one. Um, Bandersnatch. Yeah, I can't say it. I personally do not like that format because I just want to sit back and watch a movie and that's it. Like, it's too... So she's talking about the interactivity that Bandersnatch has, where you can, it's like freaking a Telltale game or whatever. You, oh, yeah. you, know, you can you can choose your own adventure, kind of thing. Yeah. So I only got like ten minutes into it, and I was like, "This is too much for me. <laughs> this is too much responsibility." <laughs> <laughs> what what cereal you want to eat? You're like, "This is too much. I can't. I can't. The pressure." Because cause I know what's going to happen is I'm going to want to go back and, like, do all the other options. And, like, how oh, many yeah. endings is there? I'm going to have, like, a whole afternoon waiting. Endless. And I'm trying to go to sleep. Like, <laughs> it's, like, too much for me. So no, you... Well, okay. Well, I'll talk about Well, yeah. Mez, you want to talk about it first? Cause you have... Yeah, much. I was going to say, it kind of remind, remind me of, like, another game we played uh, on our channel earlier. I can't remember the name of it now. But it was oh um, yeah, the British game that we played. Yes. Yeah. Where it's like kind of like a movie, that. but but you could you have a you could pick your own options. So it was like a choose your own adventure type thing and leads towards different endings, but it's usually along the same path. But this one it does like I I went through it like I think their runtime they say is an hour and a half. That's yep. like the typical runtime of the movie, and I probably was there for like four or five hours. Oh, see, I can't dedicate <laughs> going going through like different options and different endings and different. No, ways but that's cause... what he was doing. Yeah, I went through ninety minutes only because I had an ending, and I was just like, "All right, well, that's it." <laughs> Everybody's getting a different yeah. experience. So. Yeah, because like me too, I that... have zero experience with that. Thing. Like you can. There's like the first ending you can experience is literally mm-hmm. like ten minutes into the into it. Absolutely. Yeah. Where and like I got that. So it was like it was a thing where it's like if you go in and you pick one option, it's like, all right, well, that was it. That was it. Yep. I got the exact same one because I think I know which one you're talking about. It's the same choice. Yeah. And I did I said the same answer. Um and yeah, the game the, no, the game and the movie ended. And I was like, Oh Yeah. And then it'll but come up they, on screen where it'll, it'll be like, oh, you can go back to this en- this ending, yeah. or or you can watch the credits. Yeah, so they give you the choice. You can either go back and redo, like make another choice, or you can just end the movie at that choice if you want to. This is on Netflix. It is yes. on yes. Netflix. Interesting. It's part of the Black Mirror thing. I can't. Yeah, so, I, it's too much for me. It's but it's interesting, but I, well, yeah. well, let him say his impressions. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like it did remind me more of a game than mm-hmm. uh, a movie because it, it it did feel like something you could you could see in a video game where you like you're picking answers and it's like the whole choose your adventure thing because it is based off of a I guess the concept was is based off of a choose your adventure book yeah that so it's like leading towards like you could pick these options and it it branches off and that that plays into the whole story of the movie. So like outside of the the whole I guess um the way it's presented outside of that I did enjoy the story itself. I feel like a lot of that is being like passed over because people are focusing on just the way it's presented rather than what is being presented mm-hmm. in the in the movie itself. And um I did enjoy the movie and the way they kind of worked it in and everything. It it didn't feel to me like a Black Mirror um, topic. You see, that's what really. I was going to say. But then, as I pre- I was going to say the same thing. I was like, I wonder if this should have just been Bandersnatch movie and not Black Mirror Bandersnatch. 
But then, yeah. like, there are some points in the movie where I was like, you know what? This is a very Black Mirror thing to do. So I was like, it kind of makes sense. Like, that is Black Mirror, though. Yeah. To me, especially how meta the movie gets with it, with itself, about certain things. And you're just like, yeah, that's a, like when you think about how Black Mirror operates and stuff like that, like how the topics it is, goes over. I'm like, this is a very Black Mirror-ish, like, like way to go about things. If this was just a Bandersnatch movie without the Black Mirror, like, brand attached to it, I guess it would still be cool. But it, it wouldn't make as much sense because you're like, well, what? But, you know, whereas if with it being the Black Mirror name and being created by these guys, it's like, yeah, I can kind of see it like making sense. I don't know, because I always thought of Black Mirror as like it's a lot of people equate it to like Twilight uh, for the modern era. Twilight Zone, not Twilight. Twilight Zone, sorry. <laughs> Twilight Zone for the modern era yeah. where it's like these stories where they're kind of out there, but a lot of what you see with um, Black Mirror is stuff that, like, you can imagine really happening in real in real life. That's mm-hmm. not too far off. This yeah. one, I, I don't feel like has that same feel of something that's, like, you can see happening in real life. It's not too far off. Well, this was p- take past, it takes place in the past anyway, so. Yeah. So that's, that's why what kind of threw me off from the whole thing where I'm saying, like, it didn't feel like a Black Mirror thing where... A lot of what I I've come to see with Black Mirror is things that like, uh, things that are possible in in real life, or that I can see that, that. become happening. I think I can see that because that's why I was like I was kind of like debating myself with whether or not this should be a Black Mirror thing because like I get that what you're saying because like yeah you're kind of like in that thing of like um black a lot of people see Black Mirror as like a reflection of our society of where our society is, go- is could be like you said you know based off of what's happening in the moment or what's happening right now, like how, you know, they include phones and stuff like that. And this kind of doesn't do that because one is taking place in the past. Two is kind of like has that interactive feature with it. And the story kind of like is it's on its own plane. It has nothing to do with our reality or even what was happening at that time during the eighties and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get that. And yeah, it feels like a lot of with, um with black mirror stuff is based in, like the whole, I even with the name Black Mirror is supposed to be representing, representing like technology because I don't well, know if it's like, technology. Like he was, you know, with the computer. And, no, but you know, makes it make yeah, it it, in a way. But it's supposed to be like the advancement of technology. This feel it didn't like the main story. There it didn't feel like it was because of technology. It was a uh, a lot of more like I don't know because it the whole idea of like. I don't know if you guys are gonna like. I don't know if it's gonna spoil anything, but like the sp- I think, diverging I universes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That part. Yeah, like that's not a technological thing. That's more of philosophical. Some would, considering I, how meta you want to get with it, some would say the technological advancement is the movie itself, and we're the ones experiencing the Black Mirror thing. That's what I was gonna say too. Like I, because like people are gonna want to be there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like they're forcing you to do what he kind of what he's living, which is like repeating, yeah, his time, yeah, his day. And as you know, that that fact is in a little bit into the story. So, yeah, that I was fact is say, into the story. So, yeah, there, there is Without one point it, where like, yeah. I, there is one point where I feel like a character was like he was talking to the main character, but also talking to me. Yeah, which <laughs> felt very weird. So like there uh, there is one point at, like that was like that I'm like okay but um, so I mean that's where that's where I, know, I, I did I did enjoy it yeah that's where like I said that's where I'm like I'm not sure like if this is Black Mirrorish or not because it's like the topic the you know the thing itself like the story itself yes it's not very Black Mirrorish but and like I said depending how meta you want to get with it it could be the most Black Mirror thing ever because we're the ones that <laughs> you know are the ones going through it not the character in the movie yeah. <laughs> I don't like the sense yeah. of that. <laughs> um, okay, um, Kitty. I'm gonna go on to Mez for his week. Unless you had anything like big you want to talk about. Nah, that was it. Okay, Mez. What do you got? What else did you do for your week then? Um, I wouldn't say it was <clears throat> like this week, but no, yeah, it whatever. was. You know, yeah. But between the time we last uh, yeah. recorded and now, uh, I went to see uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Oh. And I know I told you guys a little bit about this when mm-hmm. I went to see it, but this was probably 
one of the best Spider-Man movies I've ever seen. It probably like even one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen. Like it, I feel wow. like it told that, that that story so well, and like the everything was done like the whole anim- animation, the story, the voice acting, like it was so good. Like I'm not even like a huge fan of Spider Man, mm-hmm. and I was really into this movie. <laughs> it's got good ratings. And it's yeah. it's apparently doing well. I, I tried to go see it several times, and uh, it's been sold out. So I I still oh. haven't been able to see it yet. Um, I want to, but every time I try to go to the to theaters, they're like sold out. I'm like, okay, well, I guess this movie's kind of popular then. It's, it's catching. Yeah, it's on. been doing well all over. I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it yet. Yeah, it's quite funny. Like I know one of the things I like I like to do is to go to something that's being like really widely like loved or something that it's generally um a critically acclaimed and mm-hmm. try to find whatever like the one star reviews are of that yeah. stuff. Oh yeah. To see what like what people think are negative about it. Yes. And like I've I saw like probably like, two or three really quickly while I was looking through it. And some of them just like make no sense like one of the guys like oh i left 25 minutes into the movie it's like why it's like there's there's nothing that was like so egregious that no happened boobs. no boobs so i left <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's like oh that's i feel like it's like one of those people like oh that's not my spider-man that's that's some oh kid who's, who's black and he's speaking spanish it was like don't they have like all the spider-mans like isn't that the point is i don't know i haven't watched it yet so i'm just going but they do look, but yeah, so i like, mean the well, focus is a, a, a lot around a lot around Miles. Okay. But they do have a, a like a lot of Spider Mans in it. Okay. That's but so sorry. because so because the main story is about Miles Morales, they're just like that's not well. They, that, they that's that, that's also me just assuming. Oh, okay. Uh, because the guy said he left in the first twenty five minutes of the movie. So oh, he doesn't like, speculate. He doesn't give a reason as to why he left. He just said he no. left. No. Yeah, That's he's weird. like, oh, this don't. Okay. This is the only time I ever walked out twenty five minutes into the, into a movie. This is you like, gotta, if you had to take a shit, that's not the movie's fault, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's your bowels. But it's like some of like the the one star reviews are kind of like ridiculous. It's like because I feel like the movie it, it wasn't like anything where it was horrible. Like there are times when you can see a movie where you enjoy things or you enjoy a bad movie for uh, different reasons or you can think a really good movie is bad, but I didn't see those like blatantly out there for this movie. Okay. Like there, I feel like there was a, a, something for everyone going into this movie. One to five, what would you rate it? I would probably rate it a five. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. So easily, easily the best Spider-Man movie you think? Out of all the Spider-Man uh, that movies. Like... That's not really hard to yeah. do, though. So. That, that there there I, are I, some I, out there. there I'd say there are a couple. It's, it's easily within the top three for me with Homecoming and uh, Spider-Man 2. Okay. But it it is a, a very uh, high favorite for that number one spot. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you talking about that. I've been wanting to watch this because a lot of people have been saying this movie's great. And stuff, so I've been wanting to, trying to watch this movie. For a week now, and have not been able to get into that theater, man. Yeah, people don't go back to yeah. see bad. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So, Spider Man into Spider Verse. Uh, what yeah. else you got? And uh, for some reason, I feel like a uh, kitty has talked about this movie before, and it was uh the boy. Uh and yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a a horror movie that I saw. And it was, it was weird how, like, what it was. Because it's, I don't know if you have seen anything about it. It was like, I've this seen it. woman <laughs> who goes to, like, <laughs> babysit a, a puppet. And I like the it fact that just... you're cracking up just starting to talk about it. <laughs> I have not seen and this. It was. I, I don't know. Uh, so no spoilers. Now you need to watch, now you need to watch it. Free, yeah. Man. Yeah. Don't even hear about it. Just go in there and watch that show. Like, that shit's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. even it's the not what you expected. Even the like looking around like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you expect a haunting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, 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 it was it was not at all what I was expecting out of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but... Weird. Okay. Yeah. You, you should, you should watch do that it. one. You should uh, watch it. Yeah, watch that one on Netflix. <laughs> you should watch that. Sure. Uh, we'll see. You guys got me watching uh, movies all over the place. Now. You love movies. All right. But I'll, I'll say that's about it for my week. All right. Uh, speaking of yeah, watching movies that might be terrible, <laughs> Minister, oh. what do you got? <laughs> So, I did some traveling, and in my travels, I found a movie theater. (laughs) In this movie theater, I found Aquaman. Oh! The worst DC hero of all time has a movie I had to see. Mm -hmm. Calm down. (laughs) Brave guy. Has anybody else seen it before I get Mm -hmm. my rating? No. Anybody? No. So, let me be the first to say... This is not better than Wonder Woman. Okay. A lot of people have been saying okay. that. Throw mm-hmm. that shit out of your ears. There's it's no made. It's made the way. most. It's made the most money. I don't care how much money it makes. There's no <laughs> way. No way. If Wonder Woman didn't have that ending, that last fight scene in it, it would have been a perfect yeah. movie. Aquaman is nowhere near. Now, with that said, Aquaman is still a good movie. Okay. It's still entertaining. Mm-hmm. Sam, this goes for you. For you to get a proper rating of this thing, it's better than Last Jedi, not as good as Thor Ragnarok. Take that for whatever it's worth. <laughs> not I, as good. And I remember what I know. thought of Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok, I thought I had too much jokes, too much stuff in there. This is where this is where I want to get your real rating from because like I, I still got another movie to review that you guys that you guys suggested right I'm gonna do that later on on my during yes. my life. <laughs> but the next the, like where do you see this as far as Justice League that's more important to me as far as Justice League yes is it better or worse than Justice League that's my that's my barometer. With movies now, because you liked ahead. Justice League. I would go ahead and say that this is slightly worse. Wow. Worse than Justice League. Yes. Now I'm going to hate this movie. <laughs> Justice League wasn't bad. Oh my God. But Justice League wasn't bad, though. But reality says otherwise. I'm sorry to tell you. Everybody <laughs> else in the world hated this movie. That's only your reality. That's an opinion. No, it's not my reality. That's, that's the reality opinion. of like over it's 100, 200 opinion. million people. They hate this movie. Over this movie's already been forgotten. Wrong, my friend. They've already you're forgotten wrong. this movie. This was supposed to be an epic. Forget it. I already you're, talked about this. This was supposed yo, to be an epic collaboration of Justice it, League. You're and they it to and nobody cared about it. Epic. I'm comparing it to just to be a movie, a standalone movie. Justice League is good. Compared to what it could have been. That's a With different story. Major characters. Compared to the you just treat it like it was a, a fucking Transformers movie? Come on. I don't think so. <laughs> but All right, Aquaman, go on. Go on, Aquaman. So, you know, like, we already had a whole podcast about this. <laughs> yeah. Aquaman is good, but it's it's got some real terrible aspects. It's just entertainment. Just like I said, uh, Last Jedi, plot sucked, uh, story sucked, but the action and all that stuff was in there. So you'll be entertained. It's the same deal with Aquaman. You'll be entertained, but story, the dialogue is terrible. I mean, it's on the, the same level as Venom in terms of dialogue. So. <laughs> I also watched uh, Bird Box and Netflix. And oh, I yeah. Say that washed yeah. the terrible dialogue of Aquaman right out of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good movie. I'm gonna go ahead and say the movie is perfect from beginning to end. I had no problems Whoa. with it. No Whoa. Problems. That's a bold statement wow. there. I don't know about that. Yeah. No problems with it. Yeah, I like the pacing. I like the characters. Mm-hmm. I liked what happened. You like the characters? <laughs> I like the characters in there. I, I don't like know. That. I don't know. Characters kind of like they, it's they were like they're making decisions to to move the movie forward. Like. You have literally one character saying, don't do this. And everybody's like, let's do it. And then something bad happens. And you're like, you fucking idiots. Like, you guys don't think about it. Or somebody's like, I'm going to do this because I have to move the plot forward. And then, oh, this guy was evil. Oh, yeah. Who could have fucking guessed that the guy coming in talking. 
Whatever. It's like so dumb. Like so, the characters were terrible, with the exception of Sandra Bullock's character, <laughs> and maybe like um Sarah Paulson and stuff like that. So who was there for like was fifteen kinda... minutes? So, hey, hang yeah, on that's on. how that's how so, good she was for me. Like, she was a really good character. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! So okay, can we all watch? Man, did you watch way, it? Yeah, the yeah, we we all watched the movie. Bullock so spoiler alert for the audience. Yeah. yeah. All right. The same way Sandra Bullock knocked on the or, or someone let her in it was exactly the same way that guy came in and he had a story a good story to back it up i know who you're talking about it's yeah, exactly Gary. the same way that the, most of them got no it wasn't the door. same way because the first time that sandra bullock was let in because dude's wife went out there um i forgot his name now holy yeah. shit um john the Malkovich. dude's wife went out there yeah john Malkovich. his wife went out there sacrificed herself he was in shock and like um the Asian guy let her. Yeah, I forgot his name too. He let him in. What, is that um, B.D. Wong? That's B. Uh, yeah, it is right B.D. Wong. Yeah, so B.D. Wong's character let her because it's a dude from Jurassic Park. Um, uh-huh. He let he let her in while the guy was like in shock that his wife had just died. So she didn't get in the same exact way. The second group that got in, um, that had like the the mask on and stuff like that, they had the whole crew around the door and Sandra Bullock had the shotgun pointed at them. They were prepped to take them down if some bullshit happened. The way Gary got in was because Olympia just yeah. let him in in secret. That's not the same way at all. Well, that wasn't the same way at all. Like he just got in, and before anybody could even stop him. And so oh boy, Gary, the most uh, oh boy, um, character opens John Malkovich is believable to me. Yeah, no, it's not the because she knows the situation that's going on. But she she's also she's not like, like that, do it. She's yeah, she's thinking that she she's, she's when she was on the other side of the door, and she said that she was like. I remember yep. when you guys weren't about to let me oh, in. I felt, I felt his pain. That was. Exploring. I remember when. I remember. She, Just because you hate said, the character, this beat is a bad character. No, it's not because it's it's a stupid <laughs> character decision to do during she, like the midst of this situation of apocalypse, where she's she, like, I remember when the plot needed to move forward, so I opened the door. Like, no, man, no. But she's dumb. generally really soft. Like, yeah, and she's. she's it, that's been established that she's a soft, soft. Does not equate to stupid. Like, yeah, I mean, sometimes. Yeah, it does. It's sometimes it doesn't. But I'm saying doesn't have. To, I'm saying it doesn't have to. Like that's just a bad ha- character. That's a bad character uh, design. Yeah, because like the way I would, I'm on like Zan's side with this. Because the way I would see it too is the fact that not only did she like want to let him in, is that she did it in secret because she saw the way when she was let in, everyone was there to like kind of make sure she was all right and doing all of that. She didn't get anyone else to like go to the door or call anyone else. She was just there by she herself. Knew they exactly. Like but then that's the they group her position. In. Why would they not? That yeah. was the group position. Why, why she? Why would she do that? I mean, she could. She would have. Could have brought people in and then like, and fight for it and be like, I remember when I was out there. We should let this guy in and try to help him. But the fact that she did it by herself and did it sneakily, that is yeah. something where it's like, it's but, being done because for the plot. It's not being done because of her character. Because if it was for her character, it would have been the same thing where everyone was there. She'd be like, we should let this guy in. I remember one on that side of the door and was yes. desperate to get in. That's a character. She would have made her case for it. That would have been in her character to make the case for him while they were all standing there. Nah, that didn't she, knew, happen. she knew she would have lost the case. So she went and, tr- and opened the door herself. And see that's just defensive knew. bad bad plot movement. I'm sorry. Like, that's not. Nah, man. She, yes. They explained. Once they explained the character's thought process, I took it. Yeah, she's going to open no. that door. If a little kid was Sandra on the Bullock other side of the was door, the only good character in that movie. Too. That's it. I think the birds did a great job. <laughs> Those real <laughs> life birds. The, and oh lord! It's like a, a, another character decision that kind of really confused me was when, like, um, the female cop and Machine oh, yeah. Gun Kelly's character just decided to take the car and leave mm-hmm. for no reason. That was kind of like, weird. What I thought, I thought you were gonna say the minute she had sex with him, I was like, why? What kind of character <laughs> that was, is that? That was also I'm a bad like, character decision. But the so, fact, like, like formulaic, why characters? would they leave? Like, I'm not gonna have sex with you. Oh, we're and then like ten minutes later they have sex. Like, come on, does every like apocalyptic movie has to have that kind of like character trope? Where it's like the woman that the two young couples that they have to like. I fucking hate that shit. I was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> With Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly, get him out of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, his rap career is dead, so he had to do something else. Oh, is he? Oh, I didn't know who he was. Zad is coming yeah. in with a bias watching this movie. <laughs> Not a bias. I, I didn't like any of the characters except uh, maybe John Malkovich's character, but he's he's just the prototypical, you know, keep okay. everybody out, you know, grumpy old guy, whatever. But 
the thing is, he was right in every situation. So it was like, well, he said it how himself, could you argue I'm with that? I'm always right. I'm yeah. not, the little things in this movie is pretty good, man. Oh, and even the okay. ending. I especially like the ending, too. Like, didn't so, expect that. It's, pretty cute. it's funny because I actually, I actually asked that about when I was watching towards the, like, the ending of the movie with my wife. I was like, huh, I wonder how this affects like uh, blind people and stuff like that. And then, well, that that's how that that's question. it. That answered that question, but um, all right. Spoiler is over. Spoilers, spoilers <laughs> over for ba- uh, for Bird Box. All right, e, what else you got? Ah, oh, that's it, man. That's it. Okay, so well, let's we, get into the main event here. We've all been waiting. <laughs> so this is this is this brings. I'm gonna say this is the only thing I definitely because like other than that, I watched all the other stuff you guys already mentioned. So, uh, on the behest. Of the, my my uh, crew members here, I watched Venom <laughs> finally. Yes. Like, where does the scales tip? It was recommended. It, it was Mez said it wasn't that bad. He said it was an, an enjoyable movie to watch. Um, you know, and Ian e Kitty Eyes. were against it so hard. Oh yeah. That yeah. So okay, here's what I'm gonna say. This movie was bad. Um, <laughs> this was a bad. This was a bad movie, Mez. I, I, I'm sorry. This was a. This was a bad... I, I did not have a good time at all watching this movie. Not once. The dialogue was terrible. They completely miss... They, all I kept thinking was like... They completely like miss... Like... Characterized this movie. Like it should have been... It felt like a, a comedy movie. Like it felt like it should have been a comedy. Everything I was watching... Like his facial reactions to things... Or like when they were mixing the, the Venom thing... When he was like transforming i was laughing i was like this is a comedy this is no way there's no way this movie is taking itself that seriously and the thing the no the thing that sucks is that it absolutely was taking itself seriously it thought what it was doing was cool like everything all the dialogue it was speculating everything like that i'm like it thought it was cool but it wasn't um nothing venom said was funny not even the pussy line like i think nothing it made me was, smile <laughs> i didn't laugh but it made me smile nothing <laughs> was, nothing he said was funny or anything like that the only time i had I, I even chuckled was when I think they were, it was supposed to be like these serious scenes where they, they thought it was supposed to look terrifying or cool. I'm like, this is a joke, right? There's no way people wrote this movie for it to be like this serious horror action movie. This is a comedy. Um, it felt like, it felt like one of those like 80s movies where like it was kind of like jokey and like, but like actually where the plot doesn't make sense at all, but you just kind of go with it because yeah. it's like, we're going to answer no Except questions and move it forward. <laughs> Except it's worst. <laughs> um, Michelle Williams was like completely underutilized and was terrible in this movie too. I hated her character. Like she hated him for exposing the bad thing that her company was doing or whatever that her her client was doing. I'm like, but you were wrong. Like I don't know what he did was was that bad. Like Eddie Eddie Brock typically was, Jenner was just trying to do a good thing, you know. So that was weird for me. And that whole, they had like no chemistry or nothing like that. So I didn't believe that shit at all. And it's like, she broke up with him for that. Like, not even a fight. Just like, you ruined my life or whatever the fuck she said. Like, that that's the breakup. Like, okay, wow. I guess we just need to get this going or whatever. It caused yeah, like that, Eddie to have the worst day of his life. <laughs> like, just get Eddie Brock to have the worst day of his life. He gets fired. He gets his girlfriend break, break up when he doesn't have an apartment anymore. He's in the shits, you know? What you and think then, about that yeah, bad guy, though? What what bad guy like? What, what you think about that bad guy, the mad scientist? He was nothing. <laughs> uh, he was nothing. He was oh, guy. He was he was villain prototype number six or whatever. That's it. Like, what did you think about that scene and that line where he's like, "You oh, changed my mind." I was I was waiting. You can't, you I was can't waiting for that. for that. Even if you're I was told waiting that for that. Coming. I was waiting for it. You still feel the the hurt. The cringe. I'm not. I'm not. Oh. Yeah. I I was waiting for it and like I didn't expect it to be where it was. And I was like, oh shit, there? Like that's how he said it? And like, yeah, he was like he was like like you can tell me whatever you want, but what's the real reason you're doing this? He's like, it was you, Eddie. I'm like, oh like no, he's like you. It was you, Eddie. I'm like, no, what the it was worse fuck? Than that. You're no, it wasn't. It was exactly like that. It wasn't it wasn't it, it wasn't was as you Eddie. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. No, it was not. No, it was not. I made it know that. It was not as effeminate as Kitty made it to seem. And it wasn't as dumb sounding as you made it to seem. It was, it was just a monotone voice like you. It was you, Eddie. Like that. And I was just like, 
That's worse. There's no emotion behind that. I would have rather preferred the feminine voice that needs to show some kind of emotion. Plot twist. Like, the Venom voice was not, like, uh, yeah. cool at all for me either. Like, it, it, it was, like, like, way too deep or something like that. Like, it, I don't know. They could have toned that down a little bit and made it. I know it was, I know it was, um, what's his name? Man, I'm getting everybody's name today. Shit. Tom Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy's voice himself doing it and stuff like that. He likes to play around with it. Yeah, it was. It was he likes to play around with these voices and stuff like that. But that was like, they they distorted it way too much. And like, they could have toned down the bass on that, that thing a bit. Because it just sounded ridiculous. It really did sound ridiculous. Um, I mean, the only good thing about it is it was a short movie. It wasn't like two hours long. It was like an hour and a half or whatever. <laughs> the only good so, thing about it for me. You know? Um, what you think if of it the was, visuals? If, People saying it was I really can, bad. I don't know what the visuals were. I could bad. barely see it. I could barely see, like, I know they had, like, a lot of moving, like, slime parts and stuff like that, like, mm-hmm. when the Venom was attached, and I was like, you could barely see that. It was always, like, in the darkness, which I was which I was afraid of. Like, it was always during, you know, nighttime that Venom was fully suited and stuff like that. And, it, you, you know, I don't know. I can I didn't enjoy it. I didn't, like, really like that, the, the visuals and stuff like that. I think they could have done better, but I guess... It's not as bad as I was expecting. It's not as bad, I guess. It's not as bad, but I think they could still have done a better job of that. Um, yeah, the the ending was like terrible. Like, I don't know, man. Top. The fight, the fight scene. Oh, that was ridiculous. Like, I couldn't even prepare for that either. <laughs> Nobody even talked about that. Carnage, like, it was, oh, oh man. the the final uh, the dialogue yeah. scene. Like, that probably yeah. was the worst part of the movie. <laughs> when I get out there, it's gonna be real carnage, and I'm like, "Come on!" Like, I I did say like that. That was the reason I was not excited for it being like a sequel. Was yeah, when I saw that, that ending. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't have said that they, was good. You could have lied about that one, man. So no, you know, that, that was bad. Good, but you, you know what? I like the part. best. The best part of this movie was the uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, um, like end <laughs> scene that they had. That was the that was the best part of this movie because like. I, I did not enjoy it. I really did not. I was looking for it. I was like, I was like, all right, Mez said it's, it's, it's an enjoyable movie. Let's see. I'm like, no, man. Like, I can't. I can't enjoy this movie. Like I said, if, if it was built as a, if, if it was built as a comedy, like with this stuff, like comedic moments, and like, like, but not the jokes they were trying to tell. That's what that's was weird. Like the jokes they were trying to tell were not funny, but the things they were trying to take seriously were funny. Like how Tom Hardy was reacting, how like the, like his reaction with the, with the with his girlfriend, or like even when like she was like Venom and they made out and stuff like that. I'm like, this is comedy, right? This is a joke. Ain't no, ain't no way this guy who wrote this wrote it with a serious thing. Like, yo, this is gonna be cool. Like, this movie was <laughs> trash. Uh, no. Like how much money it made. Sequel coming but out just like this, the first one. <clears throat> this is what I will say about this about Venom is that it left a lasting impression on me. And oh my God. that's I'm more than I could say for Justice League. Oh I would watch Venom. God. I would watch Venom again over Justice League. Oh I will say that. My God. I would say that because at least the, the, the line has been drawn. Wow. The line has been drawn. The line has been drawn. You know why? Because Venom is bad. I mean, it's it's bad, but it's like a movie you could watch when you're like drunk no. or high no. or for you can what watch reason so are you and you it can so and you because you, you can are. shit because you can shit on it you can be like yo this is fucking terrible look at this thing you can laugh at it and be like yo this is terrible so you can enjoy it you can find justice league is just boring you can't even do that you can't do that with justice league you can't even watch it and rag on it you're just like yo who wants to take a nap put justice league on. like that's what it is you're telling me e, you're gonna tell me you can watch justice league again absolutely Straight, you can watch Justice League. oh my god Absolutely, I, I can watch. How it many again. times have you watched Justice League since you first watched it? E zero. It hasn't come out on Netflix zero. Yet. You think there's a reason why it hasn't come oh out on Netflix? My God. <laughs> they don't want none of the DC movies on that shit. Yeah, I- I'm pretty sure Justice League came out before Avengers, right? <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, and Avengers, Avengers is on Netflix. They already made so the deals with Disney. That's why. No, yeah, because Netflix is smart. And they have they other DC movies on there. Service. They have other DC movies on there, so it's not like oh we can't we can't put DC movies on there. Well, they have Venom, others. Venom will be on Netflix next week because that joint is trash, and it'll be out real soon. Yeah, I I can find things to like watch with Venom and like kind of like you know laugh at it and be like okay this is you know, 
and it's funny in some senses, but in places that's not meant to be. Uh, Justice League is too a, it's just, for me. Justice League is like white bread. It's nothing, man. It's like nothing there. So I, I seriously don't get how you could watch that again, even though you won't. I know you won't. I will. I will. Yeah, all right. Maybe if you watch it again, you will see like shit. What the hell was I like on when I watched this movie the first time? Because <laughs> maybe it you sucks need to now. watch it again. Yeah, you could watch it. again. Oh, I man. watched that movie twice. It sucks both times. It was good. It was I probably good. watched this movie. I probably watched that movie more times than you guys have. Why? For That's like to you know, but I, I didn't want to go and shit talk in the movie and be like, oh wait, let me. I was like, let me watch this movie because like I had rented it, so I can watch it as many times as I want to. <laughs> so. I watched it, then I watched it again the next day. I was like, maybe, uh, you know, I was cranky yesterday. Let me see. I was like, nope, still boring. <laughs> still boring. You're trying to compare it to Avengers, that's what. I'm not trying to compare it to Avengers. I think I'm trying you to compare are it cute. to its own thing. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to compare it to its own thing. It's a boring... It's, it's not How can I compare it to Avengers to. if it's a boring movie? But it should be. I should strive for epicness. Boring. It has all these characters in it. You you can't let it... A pa- you can't give it a pass just because, like, well... You know, you have to turn off your brain, or you have to like, you know, lower your expectations. Or yet, why? These are these have like the most iconic characters in DC history. All this, you know, famous, and not even just in comic book history. And we're supposed to lower our expectations just because we want to get them across the finish line? Fuck that! No, you should raise your you should raise your game if you're gonna put out a character with this many good characters in it. It should be better than that. Like it wasn't. So I'm holding it to that standard, and it failed. It's boring. It was a boring movie. It failed on all front, on all fronts. And Venom the majority... was better than it, so that's where we're going. That, that's oh, that's the line. Uh, Venom nice was better than that. Best. Venom was better than it. Yep. I can't I believe this. So. I've never seen such a bad movie and be rated higher than something like this. I didn't rate it high. I just said I would. I just said I would watch oh it again God. over. I would watch it. I just think I would watch it more over Justice League. I would definitely watch it more over Justice League Venom because there's stuff I can take from it it's you know at least it drew something out of me whereas justice league drew nothing yes. out of me it was like nothing drew your i don't know if cringe is like something better than nothing but yes um, it is something better like there's mm. cringe that you can make fun nah. of it you can do like it's better than like white bread justice league there's nothing so you so rather much, have rotten like moldy season. bread like <laughs> yes because at least it's a reaction out of you <laughs> you're like oh this is nasty and you're like, oh shit! Remember that time I ate rotten moldy bread? Remember that time we watched Venom and shit like that? And it's like, oh yeah! Remember the time I watched Justice League? You make when? no what? sense. What? What? Yeah. It's gotta be either it really. It's gotta be either like really bad or it's gotta be like really good. Now we know Stuff you like the, moldy bread. In the, that's the, in the that's middle, what we take away boring. from this. That's just boring. Sand does not like the mediocre. He wants an extreme one way or the other. <laughs> so he likes Venom. I hope you title bad. this. Sam likes yeah. moldy bread. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> like I said, you can laugh at Venom. You can make fun of it. You can poke fun of it. There's stuff in there. You can like, if there was like a bad movie night, like, you know, you say, hey, let's go and watch the, the worst I'd movie. Pick like I'd pick Electra. I'd pick Venom on there. Yeah, Electra could be there. And you can like find things to make fun of it and be like, yo, this is, uh, yo, this is terrible, Spider- man. Like, Spider-Man uh, 3. But you still watch it. Yeah, Spider-Man 3. <laughs> it's like, Justice League wouldn't even make the list of bad movie nights or good movie night. That's that's how I see it. Oh Justice League is kind of like, okay. yeah, keep that shit out of there. Keep that out of there. <laughs> Done. But that's it. That's that's how where I fall on Venom. <laughs> so, yeah. Like I said, hey, I agree with you on it being bad, but Justice League is still terrible. You oh my God. Somehow <laughs> Whatever. shoot Justice League into talking about Venom. All right. Always, because that's the bar- that's the barometer for. Because that's that's what brought us our you know our, our biggest split of last year was the Justice League movie <laughs> the debate. Split of 2018. 2018. So that's what yeah that's what split us up. So th- that will forever be the barometer whenever we talk about at least superhero movies and whatnot. Like, is it better than just better or worse than Justice League? Um, but yeah, I guess that's gonna end it for us this week. Another. Another hot movie debate that's uh, tearing... It always comes back down to Justice League. But yeah, Venom (laughs) was another one up there. It always comes back down to Justice League. But yeah, stay tuned for uh, other stuff we got on the channel. We got the the 2019 Nonsense Overwatch Cup. Yeah. Um, We got that coming out. 
Uh, I would say probably yeah, so, a couple weeks. We're gonna have the you know the first like a breakdown video, possibly in, uh, maybe two or three weeks or so. I don't want to give it a definitive timeline, but around that, like I said, maybe the end of this month, beginning of next month, you start seeing some uh, actual gameplay videos. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're interested in that, you know, subscribe uh, to the channel because we'll be putting that out pretty regularly. We'll see how how long we go in our season, but we've. Yeah, we're going to be start, starting that. And it's uh, pretty exciting to do something a little bit different uh, on the channel and stuff. Not just play the 6v6, which at this point has become almost unplayable for us <laughs> anyway. So we got to create new ways to play Overwatch. Um, no, no, that's not the reason. Was, uh, we just want to do something different, something fun. So we're going to try uh, the, the Overwatch Cup. Um, and yeah, we, you know, we'll have more podcasts coming out. We're still going to be uh, doing what we can for these podcasts and get them out there. So yeah, tune in. Um, but yeah, I've been Big W Zan, joined by the Nonsense Crew, Secret Kitty, Mazentis on the East Coast, and Ministry. You've been listening to the Ichiban Nonsense Podcast. And we're not saying goodbye forever. We're just saying goodbye for now.